My name is Steve Berry, and uh, my farm's here in the Four Corners area. Uh, this is the home place that my dad homesteaded. We've been farming it since he was young, and um, I've been farming it myself for the past 11 years. We have about 370 acres that we take care of, and 95 acres we put in the cover crop last year. I think 77 or 75 the year before. Yeah, I started the cover crop actually a year before uh, this air program. I uh, worked with Amber, the, uh, the district there in Utah. Well, I started a year ago, two years ago basically, and that first year I tried putting the cover crop in with the broadcast, and we did a half cult pack and half just, it didn't seem to take very good. That was, uh, I was a little disappointed in the amount that we, we got some, but not near what I was hoping for. And then this last year, we did, uh, we drilled it in with, a, with an old John Deere a single disc with just a drag behind chains. It's an old, I think, Model B John Deere. Uh-huh. And I'm going to try that. Is that, you know, if you're drilling it for your biggest seed, then your lighter seed sort of follows and comes up to the surface mm -hmm. a little bit more. We had the yellow clover and we had the, we had the winter peas, um, triculates, oats, purple top turnips, some nitro radishes, sunflowers, buckwheat. And we pretty much did the same thing last year. So like the radishes and the and the turnips, they'd go, and nothing else would. <laughs> but uh, they they grew well. You can't get carbon in the ground unless you have a green plant. So we miss a lot of opportunity from March till we plant in September. There's a lot of opportunity to get some more carbon and nitrogen into the ground. That was one of my concerns: is when you plant the cover crop, you're losing the moisture trying to conserve for the next crop. But it, uh, it, it appears, and I've got yet to prove it myself, but from everything I've studied so far, it appears that you actually have a net gain in moisture. So if that's the case, then it's a plus plus. But the second year, I did see a lot of cover. Uh, we did the Haney test, 10, 10 to 1 being normal ground, and I'm about 12 to 13. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit high on the carbon. When I started farming it in 2004, I had 0.4% uh, biomass, so it was pretty much nothing there. And I think these last tests I had around 25 to 3%. I think um, the date that you plant, we don't have a lot of growing season uh, after we harvest. Harvest is usually around the end of July, 1st of August, and I go in as soon as I can. I had the seed ready, so we went in. Um, and it came up fairly quick, so we had a good three months roughly, for uh, growth. And then it's it's been dormant now from that time. I really think that that's the future of our farming. And I'm in a unique position here because I'm not making a living on my farm. Uh, it's hard for people to make a change that are making a living on it. And so for me to, to go into this and, and if they can see an improvement, it, it gives them confidence to s step forward. Um, and like I say, for me, if, if it doesn't work, which I think it will, and, but we figure out the practice for this area and we can prove it works, it's, it's going to change the minds of other people.